the eight month sleep regression. If you know me or have followed me for some time, you'll know that I really don't like the word regression. Um, why? Because it's not really a regression. Just because sleep becomes difficult or hindered doesn't mean they're actually regressing. Your child's never regressing. They're moving forwards. They're actually progressing. Um, and because of their progress, and because of the progressions I'm gonna talk about in a minute, um, it can cause disruption to sleep, especially if you're not ahead of the game and aware of what they need and what they need you to help them with, um, then you know, sleep can be hindered during this progression, this progressive leap that they're taking. So I really don't like the word regression. It's so negative and not really true. Um, so let's have a look at what's going on at this age and why we see an impact sometimes on sleep at this age, which gives everyone this phrase about the eight month sleep regression. Um, first of all, um, I really want to urge you to not uh, preempt it, expect it and look for it because actually you can get so hung up on it that you start to think, oh yeah, that's what it is, that's what's going on and then you label it and it's almost like an excuse. Um, don't expect it, don't preempt it, don't assume it will hit you. Um, just take what's happening, work through it um, and don't read more into it than there really is. So what is happening? Okay. Uh, first of all, their daytime sleep is going to be shifting around this time. So if you've had a little one from sort of six months that's been having three good naps a day and you've got into a good nap routine and things are looking good and then you get this eight month thing going on and you're like, napping is becoming a nightmare. Or maybe you never did get it off to a, a great start. Maybe it's always been a nightmare. Um, it's important to know that at eight months, things are starting to shift a bit their sleep needs in the day are starting to shift a bit. And like I said, if we're not on top of that, and if we're not meeting those needs and accommodating that sleep when it's needed, uh, you can end up with a repercussion, which is disturbed night sleep, so-called regression. <laughs> um, so it's being aware of that daytime sleep. How much does your child need? When do they need it? And are you meeting that need for them? They will not automatically just tell you when they need it and nod off to sleep brilliantly, as you know by now. <laughs> so uh, have a look at that. Now, what's happening at eight months is that that night, um, sorry, that daytime sleep is going to become it's gradually going to move towards a drop down to two naps over the next couple of months. So at eight months, you start to see a shift. Whatever you do, don't do an immediate drop. Don't go, oh, okay, we were doing three naps. We'll now do two. That's it. It's not that cut and dry. It's a transition. It takes time and it will usually be over that eight to 10 month period that this starts to happen. And you might take two steps forward and three steps back and it might be a bit stop and start for a while. So take each day as it comes. Some days your child might need three naps, some day two, some days um, two in an early bed or you know, there's all sorts going on there. And that's another episode. Um, but have a look at that and also bear in mind that their wakeful window, so that's the period of time that they can manage to be awake in one stretch, that is also growing. And you may already be overestimating it. Many parents do overestimate how long their little one can be awake in one stretch before they need to sleep. Why do we overestimate it? Because the little ones give us the impression that they're fine and they don't start yawning and eye rubbing and fussing until they're already overtired or on the brink of being overtired. So don't wait for those signs. Don't wait for that before you put your child down. Um, just because a child appears to be fine or a baby appears to be fine and not in need of a sleep yet, doesn't mean it's true. And as I say, you need one eye on the baby and one eye on the time, and then you'll probably hit it just right and find that magic window where settling is a lot easier for them. So their wakeful window will begin to stretch. The amount of sleep they need in the day, it's not so much that it's going to come down rapidly, but it's going to shift in how it's spaced out. So instead of three naps, they'll start to move towards two, but those two will be longer, quite, you know, a bit more solid, stable naps, um, rather than perhaps having the sort of a cat nap or sort of shorter ones. So things are on the shift and that is what's going to affect the night sleep if you're not meeting those daytime sleep needs. If your child is tired from lack of day sleep 
or maybe they're getting enough but it's in one chunk or you know there's a period where they're awake too long anything like that will impact the night's sleep which is why people think they get a regression <laughs> um so the next thing i want to share with you is that habits are sticking now where before six months you know if you were doing something you could you, you could sort of slightly shift that habit steer that into a new direction things now are starting to stick and become more of a thing for instance a dummy a, a, a dummy that you may have been able to get rid of before they're going to become a lot more clingy to it now they're going to become a lot more reliant on these things that are habits because they're becoming more aware, wiser, you know, developing little personalities and, and starting to hang on to things that they get used to, that give them comfort. And if those things are good, conducive comforters, brilliant, great, carry on, there's no problem there. You know, a little lovey, cuddly, teddly, silky things, like something like that, that they have control of, that's absolutely fine, enjoy. But if it's something that you know is not really a good, sustainable, useful thing, and they're clinging onto it, then you really wanna start thinking about getting rid of that, moving on to something else that actually you can use for the long term. So habits are starting to stick, make sure they are good ones. Um, other things that are in their sort of habits thing that you want to stick, the good ones, are things like having a really nice bedtime routine, having those steps you do in the lead up to bedtime, those same steps in the same order every single night. Habits like um, having a settling process at bedtime. So the things you do, you've got your routine and then it's night night and then you put your baby down and um, the way you say good night and put your baby down and that's that's a habit and it's a good one you want you want to have a good one there so that they aren't being put down already asleep and that they are practicing putting themselves to sleep maybe with your assistance and that's fine that's okay but have something that you're doing um that's a you know it's, it's getting them on the right path and it's a good habit um your night response so when you know when your baby wakes in the night make sure that you you know what the response looks like that you don't go in with something different every time you know one minute it's a feed the next minute is a cuddle and you refuse to feed and the next minute you go in and do a full-on circus show <laughs> so make sure and, and this happens <laughs> make sure you know what your night response looks like it might be that oh okay well at this point i go in and i feed but the other wake ups i go in and i give a cuddle or a pat and a reassuring shush 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 or whatever it looks like for you but make sure you know Know what that is and that you um, the, the other caregivers in in your child's life whoever goes that the, the baby gets the same thing every time and that's so important not only so for their learning and for their development and for their ability to go back to sleep but it and also it's kinder it's kinder so they know what to expect and they're not confused and going well well, last time you did this and oh I want that if you're consistent they know where they stand which is actually kinder on them um, but also for their security it gives them a real sense of security knowing where they stand and knowing what to expect and knowing that they're gonna get that steady hand from you they're gonna get a consistent steady response they might not always like it wait till your children are older <laughs> you know they might not always like what you tell them but if, if they can rely on you to always be consistent with your response and not float and waver in the wind with your response this they might not like it but they'll certainly feel safe and secure which is really important for their secure attachment and and that general security um, and so the third thing I want to share with you is that at this age around this eight month period another thing that can impact things is their awareness for where they are and where they're not or where you are and where you're not is also really coming together so they start to know when you're there when you're not there when you're in the room when you leave the room when you you know they're becoming a lot more aware of this and this is why again at this age you can see a bit of clinginess like well wait don't go stay with me um and that's all very natural it's all fine and, and sometimes the, the slightest sign of a baby uttering any kind of you know dishappiness unhappiness with you leaving the room People think, oh my gosh, separation anxiety. Anxiety is a strong word, I think. Perhaps, no, just getting used to something, more curious, more aware, doesn't immediately mean it's separation anxiety. That just sounds so strong. <laughs> so let's not label all these things so harshly, come on. Um, 
Your baby is going to become more aware of when you're there, when you're not there, and you want to give them that room to explore, to, to crawl over in a baby group and, and you know, interact with another child. When they look over their shoulder, they can see you're still there. They know you're still close by. You don't just disappear. You know, it, it's, it's really healthy exploration that you want to encourage. Um, and that reassurance that it's okay, I'm still here. And that, okay, I, I go, I come back. I go, I come back. You know, you can even play little games like this with them on the floor. Um, but yeah, knowing that they have that heightened awareness, they're a lot more aware of what's going on around them at this age as well. So lots is going on, they're developing, they're progressing. Um, because of all these developments, if we're not moving with them, and if we're not keeping up with that, and we're trying to keep them on the schedule they were on, or the napping they were doing, or the whatever before, then they end up tired, they end up out of sorts, they end up not really knowing what's going on or where they stand, and then you get disturbed night sleep, and we start to then look at the you know, thinking that that's some kind of a regression. It's really not a regression at all. I hope this helps you um, at this eight month stage. It can be really challenging. Just know that actually, even though right now it feels like it's your life, it's not. In a matter of weeks, it's all gonna change again. So try and just keep up with what your baby needs from you right now, and it will all be fine. And if you know other mums, other dads, other parents, caregivers who are at this stage with their little ones, please share this with them. You never know, there may be just one little nugget in here that just changes everything for them. And we want to help as many parents navigate this whole thing as smoothly as possible. Okay, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get updates on when we release new episodes. And do have a look for the link that will take you to a nice freebie that you can download, you can print that will help you on this topic.